All right guys, today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Motu Ultralight MK4, the interface I've been using for the last couple of years. We're going to compare and contrast it with the RME UCX2 that I've upgraded to. We're gonna take a look at build quality and use case. We're gonna take a look at software and feature design. And then of course, we'll take a listen to the preamps and see which one we prefer for spoken word. All right guys, so first let's talk build quality with the Motu Ultralight MK4. I'll do my best to throw up photos and images, maybe a couple of videos just to kind of give a better perspective as to what I'm actually narrating here. But looking at the enclosure, the enclosure is a real nice molding that's real sturdy, rugged, and feels basically indestructible in your hands. So this thing is a tank. It weighs a lot. I'll throw it on the scale and see just how heavy it is, but it's really, feels like quality piece of kit, really satisfied with it. One of the things I was really happy about upgrading to this over the uh, M2 that I was using is this one is self-powered, right? We're no longer dealing with bus power. So in, in moving from something that's bus powered like that, not only are we gonna get more powerful preamps, we're going to get just a lot more power in general. And most notably, we'll get DSP processing. And DSP processing will be a big piece of what we talk about here. That really is what will end up on the feature set list. But a lot of that's possible because we're no longer relying on the power of just what's provided via USB. So of course, on the back side here, we do have the connection for an external power supply. And then we have USB, we have optical in and out, we have MIDI in and out. SPDIF in and out, and then we have all of these line in and line out connections, and they all feel great. They're all nice, very high quality connectors with no wiggle or anything. They feel outstanding. Uh, really feels like an excellent piece of gear here. Front, we have two microphone uh, inputs, and there's just the tiniest, tiniest bit of wiggle there on the actual uh, clasp. But outside of that, I mean, they feel really nice. There's the headphone jack, of course, and then the dials feel a little bit cheap. They're pretty plasticky and they have a really cheap plastic turn to them, but I'm actually pretty happy with them in, in general use. You know, I actually recently reviewed the Locius equalizer, and if you go back and look at that, one of the issues I had with, with it was that the knobs on it were more aesthetically pleasing, but they weren't very functional. Here they're small and kind of noisy, but they're extremely functional. They do their job well. And then the LCD screen is really nice. It's a good size LCD screen that you can read from a pretty good distance. So I'm pretty happy with that. What I dislike about the screen, and I'll show it live in action, is it's just basically like a dark blue on blue. And there's no kind of scale on the, on the side. There's no metering scale. So you can see how high something's going up, but in no relation to anything else. So it doesn't really warrant much benefit there. You have the pad and the 48 volts that you would expect on the front. And then of course your preamp gain has been really outstanding. I felt like the gain was plenty enough for something like a RE320 that I used for a while. We had way more than enough power there. You'll see when we get into the preamp tests, the, the gain is plenty enough for the Shure SM7B, but you do kind of start to get right to the max limit of what it is there. So if you want more headroom, you may have to go elsewhere, but really, the design and enclosure here is fantastic. And one of the reasons that I want to do this comparison in general is just the Ultralight MK4 has been a total winner for me. I've been really, really pleased with it. And I've been looking at upgrading and the Motu Ultralight MK5 just hasn't been available. It's out of stock everywhere, but they're basically the same price point. And the more I thought about it, it being out of stock, I think may have lent itself to being a, an opportunity for me to test another piece of gear. So I looked at RME stuff. I really like all their stuff. Uh, and the things that were out there, a lot of people highly recommended the Babyface Pro, which I thought looked like a good unit. My issue with it was it was like this basically aesthetically, just the way it laid out. It doesn't feel like a very good desktop unit. It's kind of an octopus thing going on where all the cords come out the sides of it and everything, and that didn't really appeal to me. So hence the UCX2, which is fairly new, released last fall at the end of 2021. Not a ton of reviews out there on it. So I thought, hey, what if I pick one of these up, I'll do a compare and contrast, and then I can show my audience is the dollar difference between a value robust unit like the Ultralight MK4 to a big time unit like the RME where you're starting to get into like semi-professional, is that jump worth it? So with that, let's go ahead and look at build quality on the RME UCX2. 
So on the RME, I am going to throw images up here, but I did decide not to pull it out and disconnect everything. I'm just frankly too lazy, I'll be honest with you. But in looking at it here, it's a little bit smaller. I'll throw some images up. The enclosure is just smaller itself, and everything is very nicely precise German engineering. It's uh, very much everything is exact and precise on it. And the unit is a lot lighter than the Mo2. It certainly does not feel as rugged. It has just as much connectivity for in, in and out. The screen is a lot smaller, but the screen is a lot more useful. You have to be closer to it to read everything on it because it's a smaller screen, but there's uh, more colors on it, making it easier to see contrast and read it a little bit better. And then also you get metering on the side so you can actually see which inputs and outputs are active which you kind of get on the mk4 but it's not quite as clear and then you get live metering and you actually have a scale on the left so it's more useful you can actually see the effect of what you're doing without looking at your daw which is nice the one thing that i don't like is there's the one knob over here that does everything which they're trying to make it very sleek and useful and not have a ton of knobs which i do appreciate they've done a very good job of figuring out how to make one knob do everything but some of those things like if i want to mess with microphone gain i have to go into the mic i have to hit the mic menu menu go into the gain setting and then dial that one out with the one dial and kind of click through an interface with that one dial and it's not very intuitive once you use it for a while you get very used to it and you just kind of get the feel for it and you're fine with it but on the motu you just have a separate knob for microphone gain it makes it a little bit easier but it certainly looks and feels less cheap not having those cheap little dials on there you do have the two line ins on the front instead of on the rear uh, but connectivity is pretty close between the two the microphone outputs on both are pretty decent. They're both semi-powerful. They're nothing that I would get real excited about. If you're a headphone enthusiast like I am, you're gonna need something separate anyway. Build quality, really the RME it feels more exact and precise, but it also is lighter, smaller. It's interesting, it has the direct so you can record straight to USB, which makes it a little bit more portable in the sense that the Motu, if you want to record on the unit, you're going to have to connect it to either uh, like a laptop or an external recorder or some kind of other device that will actually handle the recording. You can't do that here. The RME is a little bit lighter and you feel like you can travel with it better and it has the direct to record uh, straight to a USB device. So it can be completely standalone, which is super cool, but it does not feel as rugged as this. The Motu, I feel like I could... It, it could bang against things, I could drop it, it wouldn't, and it just wouldn't get damaged. The RME, I feel like, is a more expensive unit, and I'd be terrified if it dropped or something fell on it or anything like that. So I feel like this guy's meant more for traveling on the go and better for on the go recording, and this one's meant better for somebody who wants uh, a clean standing interface. If it comes to actually taking it with me somewhere, I would be much more comfortable with the Moto Ultralight. So I feel like that's a good point to transition on to the next thing. So let's move on. All right, guys. So this is the first time I've actually used uh, RME Total Mix. And I don't mean right now this instance, but I mean with this interface, I have not used RME interfaces before. It became extremely apparent online that people love these things and they think that they're fantastic and the drivers are supposed to be absolutely flawless. So... In opening both these up, let's look at the USB settings first. So when you open up this USB setting box that comes right out after you install the drivers, they're accessible from right down here in your notification tray. And when you look at like your optical output, do you want it to be SPDIF or ADAT? And then do you want it to be consumer or pro level? It's pretty easy to articulate what's happening here. So then it has some DSP options here. It's got your sample rate options. Everything's just very intuitive here. And probably the thing that makes it the easiest for people that are doing basic recording or really want to control streaming or those types of things is this right here. How many devices does Windows see when this thing boots up? So then here you have the Total Mix software, which at first was really puzzling to me. But when you look on here, there's a lot to see, just like in, in the Motu software that we'll look at later. But one of the things that I really, really like about this is... When you click on an output, like here I'm clicked on main, and you can see that here's my microphone inputting here. And if I click to a different one, like phones, it shows me 
all these are off. I'm still getting the microphone content, but it shows you, you can see how these are all, all these faders are at zero. So like if you want, you just click on either the, you can see here it says hardware inputs, software inputs, and you click on main and then you click on or off the devices you do or don't want it to see and then just change the fader options. So if you don't want the interface output that you're selecting like your main if you don't if main is your speakers and you don't want the second mic to come through your main you just click on main and then you click on the analog two and take the fader all the way down so super easy to control and figure out all your routing once you're acclimated it feels pretty good so then when you look at the microphone here you have your general microphone settings for 48 volt phantom power you have your gain you have this nice little feature that I love. This thing has the auto set gain feature, which is super slick. You know, when you're switching microphones a lot, this can really kind of help you. What it does is if it detects you clip once, it'll back down the gain six decibels and make sure that you don't do it again. So really a nice feature for basically not allowing you to clip. And then when you go into EQ, you can obviously EQ the microphone until your heart's content with a low cut here and then you have a three band equalizer but i really like that they have some nice presets in here too because again it makes it a little easier for those of us that haven't been using pro gear for years and years you can kind of look through here and just see what some you know if you have a live vocal mic this is the preset they recommend and you could try that out and see if it fixes whatever is wrong with your microphone that you don't really care for very flexible software and everything just works all the time the metering has like no latency. So again, small little quality of life touches that are really great. And then under the dynamic tab for the microphone here, we have our compression settings where we have our attack threshold and release, which is nice. And then you also have this auto level feature, which is really cool. You can select this and then allow it to boost your microphone by a certain number of decibels. So you can say, hey, the most you're allowed to boost my mic is say six decibels like I've set there. And then you can also set to say, hey, I always want six decibels of headroom before clipping and then how long the rise time is. So really, really handy. Again, you can set this up so that it's kind of foolproof. I'm just really can have come to appreciate what Total Mix offers, the quality of life of how quick it boots up, how easy it is to figure out what routing I want, how quick it is to get a microphone to sound good how quick it is to determine what's coming out of my main and what's coming out of my phones, and then the USB settings and seeing how many devices Windows sees and that sort of thing. I just love it. It's got a loop back button right here on it, which is pretty impressive. The other thing is when you go to set gain, you can just like double click and it gives you a little text box to type into, which is cool. It's just very, all these tiny little quality of life things that add up. So for me, this interface has really become very, very handy. I really like the software. It's grown on me over time, obviously, as I've learned to use it a little bit more. The big difference for me is everything just works all the time with absolutely no latency. There's no perceived latency in any of my use cases. So with that, let's go ahead and move on. All right, guys, so here we are with the Motu software pulled up just as we did the RME. This is the Motu discovery page. Here you get the Thunderbolt USB page, which shows we have the MK4 connected via USB here. We go to all devices, it should, it'll list out all of them if you have them there. A firmware updater, which shows that we are running the latest firmware and then under advances here. So here's the Motu control panel. You can see it opens up via a web browser. And then here is the configuration page, which is kind of nice because you get a lot of the same features that you saw in the USB settings, the army that were missing from the discovery piece. So here we have our sample size or, or sample rate or buffer size. Then you can do a quick setup where you actually choose, hey, how do you want to talk to the computer? As an interface, a mixer, interface and mixer, live recording, optical converter, opti optical converter with monitor mixing. So some options there on how you want it to talk to Windows. Here you have, again, your 48 volt and, pan and pad are accessible via software, just like they were in the RME interface and then some some more output settings here on this tab we have the routing for the device here you're able to do, do the matrix i did miss on the rme software there's a matrix button you can push to and do 
basically the same thing. So these are kind of nice. The only thing that I do like about the Motu software better for their matrix routing is that this one shows which outputs and inputs are receiving a signal via the little blue light going on and off with the signal. So that's kind of nice. It tells you where it's seeing a signal and where it's not, and then you can route it accordingly. Now under the mixing tab, this is where it gets a little bit interesting because when you look at it here, you have all these tabs that you can pull for like, okay, I want the high pass filter to show up. Okay, I want the noise gate to show up. I want the EQ, I want the graph for the EQ, compressor, the graph for the compressor, right? So you click on all these things and pretty soon you get this huge mixing board, which is really nice, but it's not as easy to see everything as in the total mix. Now here you have all the mixer inputs, the mixer outputs. It's a very flexible device. You know, when you look at the mic instrument here, here, here would be your compressor settings if you have it engaged, which here you can see I do have the compressor on. You can switch that on and off, just goes away. And then with your EQ settings, like here on the main mix, this is for a set of headphones I recently reviewed. You can, I love this one that I have four and I can literally slide them around and make them have any kind of Q factor I want all the way up to 10, which on the total mix software, you can only go to five. So I feel like the EQ settings are much more advanced and flexible here, which I really appreciate. This is a big deal to me. In my use case, this completely eliminates the need for another piece of software. The RME mostly eliminates the other piece of software because as long as I can live with the Q factor of five being my maximum, I can make that work. When you look at the mic compressor and all the functions that are in here, I think what it boils down to for me, the Motu is wildly flexible. It can just, I mean, you can see in the way they built it, it's meant to be mounted in a rack or thrown in a backpack. It's meant to be able to power any mic you want do any kind of EQ you want, manipulate any signal in any way you want. I think the learning curve with the Motu is a little steeper. When you want it to tap in and talk to Windows, if you want it to see multiple devices, you have to use a Windows registry edit, which I have done. Again, in the RME, it's just a little drop-down box. You just choose. Here, you have to make a Windows registry edit to make it happen. Maybe the Ultralight MK5 is different, I'm not sure. The other thing that is pretty neat with this that I've never used is the touch console. If you have an iPad or something and you want to physically touch the screen, you can have an iPod, iPad sitting off to the side and use it as a touch screen EQ and fader mixer which would be pretty neat. I never really found the need to add anything like that since I'm always sitting at my desktop. The mixing station that's kind of built in here is pretty good. Again, it's a 2016 unit, so the DSP processor is just a little bit slower. Switching menus takes a little bit of time. Powering on and off takes a little bit of time. And actually powering on and off now in comparison to the RME takes an eternity. It seems like not only does it take forever to boot up, it then takes an additional, you know, three, four, five seconds before Windows recognizes it's there. So not not big things in, in the grand scheme of things. I could use the MK4 until it died. I just had some features in the RME that interested me. There weren't a lot of reviews on it. And as my interface needs grow, I, I enjoyed the thought and the extra stability put into the drivers and such that the RME unit felt a little safer for me. This is a killer unit. There's so much power here. If you're using a USB interface and you're contemplating going from like an M2 or an Audion Evo 4 or one of those kind of entry points, those nicer entry level interfaces, and you're thinking about jumping up to here, man, I can't recommend these type of units enough. The latency is slightly higher than on, on the RME and everything, I feel like every little aspect of it is just not quite as polished. Does that add up to a huge difference? I don't know. Why don't we go ahead and do a mic preamp test and see if that amounts to much of a difference for us. Let's listen to that now. All right, guys, here's the first part of our microphone comparison, just testing the microphone preamps on the Motu Ultralight MK4. Now, in testing these, a couple things I do notice that stand out to me right away. On the LCD screen that's available on the Motu, it's very nice and big, but in this particular case, this screen is kind of a navy on blue, and it's nice to see live metering to see what's happening with your signals, but you do not get any kind of 
numerical indicators on the side. So you don't know actually what decibel levels you're hitting. So like in order for me to level match this microphone, I'm using the Shure SM7B and I have the Audacity live metering in here. We are peaking at an average of negative nine decibels. So I don't have to boost or manipulate any of the audio on post so that what you hear is actually what the mic preamp is picking up and no processing or anything. The other thing that I notice is we are, we have the mic gain set at 56 on the Motu's uh, microphone gain, but it caps out at 60. So we're almost at the full potential of the Motu Ultralight MK4 microphone preamps. However, it's obviously plenty powerful. This is a very difficult microphone to drive and we have another four decibels on the, on the meter there. Our absolute max peak that we have hit is negative four decibels. So we're averaging negative nine, but we have a max peak at negative four. All right, guys, I'm hardly a professional at this. So I'm just using the Audacity uh, live metering to see where I'm at for trying to level match these two again. So I don't have to apply, apply any kind of boosting or anything in post-process. I want you to hear just detail exactly as the audio came out of the microphone. So here are the RME uh, Fireface UCX2. I have the microphone gain set at 66. This one caps out at 75, so we have nine more decibels of headroom here. We're averaging negative nine decibels. Uh, so far at this point, we've peaked at a negative six decibels, so maybe we're not quite matched there, but I'll talk a little bit and we'll see where it goes so you get a really good feel for our live metering. So a couple of things I notice is not only do we have more headroom on the microphone inputs here, the screen, while much smaller, is full color scale, so it gives us some, some easier reading. And then it does have a level meter on the side so they can see what decibels I'm hitting on the device itself. So let's say you were recording somewhere and it was uh, the device was gonna be right next to you, but you didn't have the monitor face towards you or the laptop face towards you or whatever. You could see right on the device itself. So again, the screen's smaller, but it appears to be more useful. And then the microphone preamps appear to have more headroom on them, which would indicate that they have more dynamic range. Uh, but we'll see how they sound in comparison. We'll do kind of a test here and listen back. And you guys can tell me what you thought. Having gotten all that out and said all that, we did peak at a negative five. So we're real, real close, maybe a decibel off. The Motu Ultralight MK4 may be a decibel more loud in that previous recording, but again, very hard to level match them because they're not the same preamp. So hopefully that's helpful, guys. Let's move on. All right, guys, so I'll do my best to sum things up here. Do I think it's worth it for most people to upgrade from the Ultralight MK4 or similar device to something like the RME UCX2? Yes and no. So I think for one, it depends on what you're doing, right? In your use case, when you're generally getting involved and you're using a bus powered interface, let's say something like the Audient Evo 4 or the Motu M2. Those are great devices, but they're very basic. And for a lot of people, that's fine. That's all they need. If those are all the functions you need and it checks the box, great. But what's nice about moving up to these is you start to move into the bigger boy interfaces where you get external power. And that provides you with cleaner uh, microphone preamps with more dynamic range. It provides you with a lot of DSP processing to be able to do compression, noise gates, complicated routing. You can also do lots of equalization, both on the inputs and the outputs, which is very handy. You know, whether you're messing with a different microphone or you're messing with headphones that you want a different outcome out of. So I think all of that really boils into, I think moving into a bigger external interface is going to be worth it for a lot of people, especially people who are using it on a regular basis. So the Ultralight MK4 is an awesome unit. And I think the only thing is, is it came out in 2016. So it's starting to show a little bit of age, but it's rugged and it's extremely flexible. It just feels a little less exact in basically everything it does. It's a fantastic unit. It's built like a tank, noticing just the difference between it and the RME, how quick it is to power on and off, how quickly Windows recognizes it as being there as a present device, you know, how quickly the um, metering shows up. There's a slight bit of delay in the, in the Motu's processing. Now the Motu does some things better. The equalizer is better because you get four bands of equalization that'll essentially do whatever you want them to. The RME's equalization is extremely limited. They give you three, those three only operate within a certain band and then a Q factor of five is the max you can do. So you can't do really precise equalization changes on there. So that's a difference. I think that 
once the Mo the Motu will power most microphones out there to an outstanding degree. I don't think most people are never going to notice the difference between the preamps on the Motu and going up to like the UCX2. The difference is, is the UCX2 not only can power a stronger microphone, which I haven't had the need to do yet, but it has a lot more headroom. And headroom in recording is always valuable. And the longer you start to record, the more you appreciate headroom. So I feel like both of them are pretty clean. But again, the Motu feels like the preamps are probably a little less expensive and they're more of a brute force kind of solution, whereas the RMEs are very clean. They're clean for probably five to 10 decibels uh, more gain than the than the Motu is. And I think that generally speaking, you can record two quality pieces on both devices and they're gonna sound nearly identical. One just has more headroom for more flexibility. I think that the other functions that are built into the units like the auto leveling, the compressor, the auto gain setting in the Fireface, the Fireface seems to just have a little bit more precision in every little thing it does. Essentially, I think that it's kind of like the diminishing returns on headphones. You know, I feel like getting a decent interface like a Motu M2 is great, but then the jump from a Motu M2 to an Ultralight MK4, I feel like is a big boy leap. I feel like you're getting a lot of bang for your buck there. Then I feel like going from the MK4 to the RME is a nice upgrade. And for me, I feel like it's worth it. I use it enough for enough things that that upgrade is worth it for me. I'm gonna keep the RME. However, I feel like a lot of people would make that jump and go, man, I don't know if these small features, the little bit better display, the slightly better drivers, the lower latency, all these things, do they compound and add up to the difference in price? Because there's a pretty good price gap there. I don't know. I don't know what most people are going to feel. But I hope that we've shown you enough here today between the software features, build quality, and mic preamp quality. Is it enough for you? So hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. Hopefully it helps you make a purchasing decision because that's absolutely what we're out to do here. Don't forget to like the video to get it boosted. Subscribe to the channel to bring more eyes into the content and participate in our conversations here. Don't forget to follow me on social media so that you know what I'm working on next. And as always, stay safe out there, guys. Take care.